Google just changed SEO forever with the release of AI mode. This is a, a bit of a replacement to AI overviews, which was already drastically decreasing click-through rates to many websites. This together with Project Mariner, which is their autonomous AI agent that can do tasks for you on the internet, like make a booking for a restaurant, buy something online or research for you without you having to physically be at your computer, will drastically change the way we browse the internet. And if you don't adapt, your SEO, along with your leads or sales, will eventually disappear. But in this video, I'm gonna give you seven steps that you can take today to make your website and your overall digital presence a lot more discoverable by AI search engines. If you don't know me, my name is Nico. I'm an AI SEO specialist and I run an online community where we help and support people rank number one on AI overviews, GPT search, perplexity, with the help of AI tools and automation. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the video description below, but that's not why you're here. Let's get to step number one, is making sure your website is agent friendly. I know this seems counterintuitive. We used to hate when agents or robots used to crawl our website. Now I think it's important to see how friendly my website is for that. What you wanna do is get on manners.im or get GPT operator or any autonomous agent and give it a task to do on your website. For example, let's give manners.im the task of submitting a query for this website and see if manners does it. So I'm gonna give it to site here, go. My name is Nico. Can you please submit a form or contact form on the site telling the owner that I have a chihuahua that I want to train and I live in Brunswick in Melbourne. Can she help me? I'm going to fake, I'm going to make up some fake information data as well and see, and see how it does. You can try Manners for free. We've got a freemium plan, although once you do one or two tasks a day, it'll run out. But it's worth trying it and seeing if an AI agent like Manners, like any of the other, like any of the other agents, they can actually do the tasks that you set on their site. And most AI agents have a feature, a computer inbuilt browser feature that you can see how they're going through the website. And if it's good, so you can see that Manus has gone to the contact me page. It's understanding the different aspects of the website. Let's see if we can actually submit the form without a problem. And then you can see here that it nearly sent the message, but there was a problem trying to send the message. And this is the exact things that you want to check whether the error is from the AI agent's perspective or the website is something you need to figure out. If it has a problem and you don't know what caused it, by the end of the session, you need to ask the agent, hey, what went wrong there? How, what went wrong? Why couldn't you fill the form submission? I recommend you try it with at least two agents, maybe Manus and GenSpark as well. Step number two is ensuring you have the correct structured data or markup schema on your website. If you've never heard of markup schema, it's a bit of code that you can place on your website's header or in the, in the individual pages headers to make your website's content instantly recognizable. If you don't have structured data, Google has to really work to understand what you have on your website. For example, what is the service you're offering? Where are you offering it? What are your reviews? Who's your author? all these other things, Google has to really crawl and understand what it is that you offer. But if you have the correct schema markup or structured data, Google can instantly recognize what is there. And if you make Google's jobs easier, you're a lot more likely to rank. Google has stated on many occasions that their AI, that their AI overviews and their agents are using schema markup or structured data to reference their answers. If you want to find out whether your website has the correct schema markup, grab the URL of maybe your services page or your product page. You're going to use a free tool from Google called Rich Result Test. You're going to click it here and give it a while. This is testing what kind of schema or structured data you have there. Now, there are hundreds and hundreds, and if not thousands of different schema that you can have on that page, depending on what the content is on your page. If you have a service, a product, reviews, if you have a how-to guide, all these things have schema. And I know here I'm missing stuff because I can only see one bread from schema. Now what we can do is go to things like GPT search, or we can even try perplexity, give it the URL and quickly ask it, understand this page and tell me all the different types of schema markup that I could put in here to make myself more discoverable. Really simple, nothing too complicated. You can also do this with GPT search, it doesn't really matter. After a little while, 
perplexity or GPT search is going to come back to you because it will understand the contents of the page and tell you all the different schema that you need to put on the page. See here we've got local business, professional service schema, course schema, event schema, offer schema, and all these other things. And this is what the code looks like. What you want to do is inject that into the header of that page. Number three is targeting long tail keywords and conversational queries. I've been saying this for a while, but you want to target long questions that people are asking. For example, you don't want to target best hiking shoes for women. You want to target what are the best hiking shoes for women who are hiking through the Patagonia. For example, this seems like a very strange long tail keyword. And often if you do keyword research for these search terms, you're gonna, you're gonna find little to zero search volume for these terms. It doesn't matter. This is how the SEO game from content is being played these days. You wanna find all of the frequently asked questions or related questions to your topic and answer those in detailed blog posts. If you don't know the questions that people are asking, you can use tools like Answer Socrates. This lately has been my favorite one. And for example, we can go hiking shoes for women. Let's put the country here to the United States, English and search. This is going to do a search on all of the frequently asked questions around hiking shoes for women and deliver to you in a nice, beautiful report. And here I've got the question sorted by are, how, what, and all these things. Now you've got enough questions to your heart's content. Each question should be a blog post that you answer. And this stuff really, really works. In fact, we do it all the time. This is the traffic from one blog post that from one blog post where we did this, we're answering questions like what is a normal temperature for a gaming laptop, a really long tail question, and we're getting a lot of traffic for that. And by the way, we built this whole blog post completely with AI, but it was high quality content. I've done a tutorial on how to write high quality content with AI that will get you traffic. I'll leave that linked above or below so you can go watch that if you wanna write high quality content. Number four is diversifying, diversifying, and you guessed it, doing a little bit more diversifying. To quote one of the SEO legends, Neil Patel, SEO is changing from search engine optimization to search everything optimization, meaning you want to be on as many platforms as possible. And I completely agree. We've actually seen the data demonstrate that this is the best way to go about it. But this can take a lot of time. You want to be on Instagram, YouTube, Shorts, Reddit, Pinterest, Facebook, all these things. And if you don't have any time, do not worry. You can do automations that do the work for you. For example, this is an automation that we teach in our community where we use as a trigger the publication of your blog post. We then have a pre-trained custom GPT, understands the content, and then we have other GPTs that rewrite that content for LinkedIn, Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram, pick your social media of choice. And we even call Flux, the image generator, to create an image for each of the platforms. So all we need to do is concentrate on one platform or on one piece of content, your blog post, and now we can spread that out to all the platforms without having to really worry about it. What we can do then is automatically even publish it to those platforms. If you're interested in learning how to automate this stuff, again, you can check out our community. And if you're a bit camera shy and you don't want to make videos of yourself, I recommend you get used to how to create an AI avatar. You can try things like HeyGen where you can where you can create avatars that speak any text that you place them in there and therefore you don't need to record yourself. I would always recommend putting your face in front of the camera, but if that's not your thing, there are a lot of other options. You just need to learn how to use an AI avatar generator. HeyGen is my favorite for that one. Number five, and that is optimizing your website's on-site SEO. And there's a lot to this, but I want to give you three main things that you can focus on. Number one is your website loading time and speed. This is still a critical ranking factor and also a conversion factor of your website. The slower your website, the more resources you waste from the AI crawlers and the less they're going to want to actually go onto your website. But you need to keep in mind that your website loads a lot differently when you go on it than when somebody new goes on it. So we need to test it. And we do that with tools like GT Metrics or Google Site Speed Test. Let me show you what GT Metrics looks like. You're going to go to GT Metrics, put the website URL in there, and you're going to go to Analyze. This is crawling through your website, analyzing if it's loading quickly or slowly, and going to give it a score from A all the way to D. It's also going to give you the reasons as to why your website might be loading slow. You can see here, this one is loading critically slow. If your website shows anywhere below a B, you want to make that your priority to fix. 
GT Metric, thankfully, also gives you a bit of a report as to why your website is loading extremely slow. The only thing is that if you're not a website developer, it's pretty difficult to understand what these things mean. But don't worry, I've prepared a little custom GPT for you that will kind of translate this and give you a step-by-step -step guide on what you need to do to fix your website's loading time speed. All you need to do is once you have the GT Metrics report, you're going to share and download the PDF here. This is going to give you a PDF and I'm going to leave a copy of this custom GPT below. Looks like this, the GT Metrics Report Analyzer. Very creative name, I know. You're gonna place the report, PDF report from GT Metrics and simply hit enter and it knows what to do. It'll translate these web slangs into findings, priority issues, and even give you the tools you need to be able to fix your website. Another simple and important things when it comes to optimizing for on-site SEO is having the correct structure on all the pages, particularly the headers. I know they are simple things, but they are very important. You see that this website goes directly from a H1 to a H5. You should go sequentially from H1 to H2, 3, 4, and so on. And ideally, you also want to add the right keywords here. All of those things this website is missing. You don't want to go from one to five. Again, you want to go sequentially. All these things stack up to make your website a lot more discoverable and understandable by the search engines. And the last thing when it comes to optimizing your on-site SEO is making your website conversion friendly. This site here, for example, doesn't have a button the second I land on it. You need to look at your website and see if you're making the same mistake. You'd be surprised how many people don't. So here, for example, what I would do is add a clear button with a CTA, maybe book your website, book your free consultation today. Simple, but you want to be able to maximize the traffic that you do get because you're probably going to get less traffic. You also wanna make it easier for those AI agents to convert on your website. Number six is getting on Bing Webmaster Tools. GPT search is powered by the Bing search engine network. So you want to make sure that you have your Bing Webmaster Tools account verified and you've submitted your sitemap in there. It's not to say that you won't get found if you buy search GPT, if you're not on Bing Webmaster Tools, but you you want to allow yourself the greatest possibility to have control of that. Be able to submit your sitemap. If you publish a new blog post, submit it right away to Bing Webmaster Tools and you're going to increase your chances for that. I believe the traffic from Bing is only going to increase in the next coming years, so make sure you take advantage of this today. Number seven is building simple but effective web apps. I know this seems silly, but this does two things. It sends really positive signals to the search engines because if a user stays on your website for a while and clicks, it's a high positive signal. And also it kind of forces a user to go on your website to get that value. Because if you create a tool, the AI engine or the AI overviews or GPT search, it can't quite generate the whole application on the search engine or on the search results. But if you, for example, I've built a tool like here, the Google search preview, where I put in a URL and I see exactly what it looks like over here. And it can help the user find out, for example, if it's too long, it'll go red. And the same thing with the meta description, it's actually quite useful because I can get a preview of what my page is gonna look like in the search engine results page. And you might think, oh, I don't know how to code. How would I even build these things? You don't really need to know how to code. The best tool I find for this is Gemini 2.5 Pro, particularly with their Canvas feature. I've done this many, many times, and if you ask it to generate a quick web app for your website, for example, it can be a cost calculator, or if you are, uh, if you ha have a jewelry store, it can be a ring size calculator. Ask Gemini to give you ideas if you give it some background on what your business is. Here, for example, I have a published post action prioritizer, for example. I often put these also in my content, in my blog post, and they work really, really well. But you wanna create simple web applications. Actually, research also shows that these things convert better than a downloadable PDF, for example. So they get good traffic, and they also convert quite well. I'm gonna give you a bonus step. Number eight is stay informed. Now, this seems very simple, but it's really worth it. One of the best places to keep yourself informed is with Google Search Central. This is the official place where they publish a lot of information. In fact, a lot of the information I got for this video is from this here, where they told us the top ways to get exposure from the Google AI's experience on search, which is fantastic, but 
there is a big drawback because what Google tells us to do to rank our website often differs incredibly to what they actually do to rank a site. We know this from Google's leaked documentation data in 2024. So I would suggest that you also keep yourself updated with communities. You can join your Reddit communities or big dirty plug, you can join our community AI ranking where we really collaborate about what is working, what isn't. We have other industry experts come in and it is incredible because you get a number of people that are going through your same journey and it's great to collaborate and to clarify what is working and what isn't. We also have very updated tutorials on how to maximize AI for SEO, even in the a even in the day and age of the AI search engine, and we get a lot of good results for our members. If you're interested, you can try this out risk-free for seven days. If you don't like it, I'll refund you 100%. And that is it. Make sure you apply those seven to eight steps on your website to make sure you are more discoverable for the AI tsunami search engine that is coming. If you found value in this video, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel where we publish content like this on a regular basis. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.